Welcome, Mavitri, and thank you very much for making the time to share your experience and insights with us. Good afternoon, leaders, and thanks for your invitations. This is really a great opportunity for me as well. So, Mavitri, you have spent a number of years now in marketing, and you've also been in communications as well as employee relations. It's interesting to me to see how you've taken your core strengths in communication into the field of HR. And today you are the country HR head at Jacob Doe Egberts, where you have spent five years, right? So yes. tell us about your journey into HR and what you're most passionate about in this field. I see. Um, actually, my, my journey in HR was um, back to my friends. Uh, I didn't plan it um, as my career aspirations since the beginnings. Hmm. At that time, I had a career break. Uh, after I worked for 10 years in marketing and also worked in supply chain with Johnson & Johnson. Mm -hmm. um, when I have a career break, one of my friends at church uh, who saw me like mentoring people, training people and work with people uh, all the time, she sees that I could be able to be a good HR. So that's why she invited me to work for the companies as an HR head at that time. Mm. So that's where my career in HR began. And um, from that point in time, um, I was able, I have a good opportunities to later on work with uh, Nestle, mm. where give me kind of um, a new perspective of HR professionals. So over there at Nestle, I see how HR could uh, contribute to the business, work very well um, to uh, help the business uh, growing and be part of a uh, business as an HR uh, business partner. Mm -hmm. Even though I wasn't an HR business partner at that time, but it really uh, inspired me. And I did learn a lot from uh, very good people over there. Uh, so that's why, uh, that's where my HR career uh, started. And later on, I uh, had an offer uh, with Jacob Dow Egbert. Uh, now I work with uh, Jacob Dow Egbert for five years as an HR role. Yeah. So in that five years, what might be some key learnings you've had in the HR space, especially in the last two years where we've seen the pandemic and lots of disruptions? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. With the pandemics, uh, it's like totally changed the ways of work, the way of thinking. Um I would say uh, speed still have to be number one because now people work remotely, uh, digitals come in. So everyone want quick response. Um, situation change immediately. So we have to um, be on call, make sure that uh, whatever change, numbers of new COVID or situations, the uh, crisis come. So we have to respond to that immediately. So I see that um, process has been um, tighten and people's uh, uh, open for a change uh, more. So this is how I see it's allow HR to also contact and connect with uh, business um, more closer. And also we uh, have to improve in terms of communications mm. to not just only stick with a certain or traditional ways of communications, but to allow to utilize their new technologies as part of our communications and to make it natural um, as a communications tools with our people. Yeah. So this is what I see uh, has been changed recently. And from your experience alone, it's interesting that you bring up communication because you are from that field. And, and it's clear that there are transferable skills from any discipline or field which is useful in HR and recruitment. So what might be some of these transferable skills you've had that have helped you make a smooth transition into the HR field? I would say that the experience, past experiences in business help me to understand what business think uh, or need or uh, help HR to support business requirement much better because I used to work uh, in the business uh, and take a role in the business before. This is the benefits that I think it's transferred to where I am mm -hmm. and be able to see things uh, clear, routed. Uh -huh. This is one thing. Besides that would be uh, in terms of communications, 
in terms of understand consumer insight, mm-hmm. um, use like a project management to apply into uh, HR work to make HR work more efficient. This is uh, how I see the part of the non HR to when we when I moved to HR, how it in uh, corporate very well and helped me to grow my career uh, faster. Yeah, employee yeah. relations and communications, as you said, are critical in any business. But mm-hmm. what might be some of the fundamentals of employee relations in your experience that HR teams need to know so that they can create and, and even maintain positive relationships with uh, employees? I think fundamentals of employee uh, relations or employees engagement uh, would start from connect with mm. people. Uh, HR has to um, be able to approachable. Uh-huh. Um, people could come to HR could be able to talk to HR, also HR talk to people um, as a friend as well, besides like um, besides the business part. So connect is the per- first part. Second, um, HR need to listen very well. Mm. Many times you may hear people talk about things, but HR has to have a very good listening ear. Um, understand what's between the line what's happening in order to interact and uh, serve the business at the right time. And um, besides that, I think uh, the fundamentals of uh, engage people engagement is to recognize people. People, once you recognize them, they will show you more because when you recognize people, it means that you respect them. You respect their differences. You respect their abilities. You uh, you value them. So when you value people, people will give it in return uh-huh. and also uh, walk the talk, mm-hmm. support support the uh, function, support the business as you show them, tell them, support them. It doesn't mean that you have to follow whatever they request, but um, at least um, you, you know what happening and be able to tell them what does it mean. So in other words, you, the HR teams need to be very open, especially now with people working remotely. The listening has to be more intent and there yes. has to be a lot more attention being paid to the, the needs of employees yeah. and, and what they yes. need to do their work and their jobs. Uh-huh. About, right? yes. On that note, internal communications and culture building have been um, fundamental and very important in creating strong work environments. But this is not an overnight success though, is it? So do you have any success stories that you'd like to share? Actually, the success story that I'm going to share is not um, my personal success story, I would say. I think it's a share success stories of mm. the managers, the leaders, and also the companies that we work together as one. One story that uh, still touched me until now, it's uh, from the recent uh, factories uh, shut down that uh, I have to communicate this uh, sad news to uh, our members who work for the companies more than like 20 years or some of them work for the companies since the beginnings of their career um, with the long um, like um, heritage of these factories mm. 30 years in the companies produce the product for the companies we had a very highly engaged teams in that factories the day that I have to communicate to them about the factory shutdowns, they broke into tears. They and also they get mad with HR because they see that why HR separate them from this good place. What we did is we allow them to get mad with us, ask them to come and then um, talk to them about their concern, about their fears, about their emotion, to make sure that they be listened. And also, uh, they know what the futures would be, what's the plan that the companies uh, prepare for them. Um, so at least they, they be transparent about what's happening next. We provide them with the job fair, uh, asking uh, the factories and neighborhoods uh, for the vacancies the, uh, and op- to offers to our peoples because our peoples are good peoples. We uh, work with the governments to find the 
kind of uh, helping them to learn the new skill. If some of them want to be an entrepreneur and don't want to work in the uh, uh, factory anymore, so and also we help them to learn about financial management because they're gonna have the sovereign pays and then um, how they're gonna manage that mm. uh, financial plan. So we we offer uh, several uh, activities along the way before the factories are shut down to make sure that this is the plan that the companies prepare. For them, because the companies care for them. So why I'm uh, talking with one of the seniors, uh, managers. Uh, Mavitri, how long did your team spend uh, engaging with the uh, employees oh, it, after delivering the news? We communicate the shutdown six months in advance, which is quite a challenging um, situation. Six months telling people about the factory shutdown wasn't something recommended <laughs> by any label. Legals or anyone, because it's gonna create us with a lot of uh, chaos at the end. But uh, with the companies that we care and we want to be transparent with people, our um, senior management see that it's right for them to know and have plan uh, for their uh, career or for their personal life in advance. Since they work with us for more than ten years, mm. so they also have the right to know. Uh, as soon as possible, so we decided to inform them six months in advance. But for HR, it's so challenging. Uh -huh. But with this plan, mm -hmm. um, it doesn't promise that we are going to success in our uh, engagement with people because it's just normal plan. Anyone could do this kind of plan. What make the difference? The uh, engagement uh, with the factory shutdown difference is. From one of the conversations that I have with the senior managers uh, over at that time, he told me that, Kun Michelle, do you know, I understood the company situations. I understood the business requirement. I see that our baby, he called his job, he called the product that he produced that his baby. He's, he said that now our baby is has to leave us to go to the new world. So we have to let our baby going to experience something new, something bigger, something better. So I'm, he said, I'm so glad that um, now our baby that we uh, uh, deliver them since the beginnings growing and going to expand. Now our place, our family cannot like maintain or contain um, have capabilities to carry this much. Uh, and at times when I heard this, I was like numb and I cry actually because I'm kind of touched that I didn't expect that he would say this kind of things with the company. So I came back, talked to the teams that we are going to produce the videos, recognize these groups of people, how great their mindset is, mm. and also recognize each uh, individual's functions in different part of the factories, how dedicated that they are. They were in the past 30 years, 20 years with the companies. Um, we put it into videos and then have them put it, uh, give uh, testimonials mm -hmm. of how um, they work, how they commit to the work. We film the videos and then we show to everyone and say that this to recognize all of you that how much uh, great work you deliver. And um, once when they uh, saw the videos, they feel impressed, they feel proud to be part of the factory shutdown to deliver their babies uh, to the new factories. What they did is they make sure that every single step of factory shutdown preparations had to be in good hands. The machines had to pack, well packed, well equipped uh, to the new factories. Mm -hmm. They even uh, helped to fly to the new factories to resemble and to construct mm. the machines at the new place. They make wow. sure that the raw materials, the products and everything are in good hands, were in good hands. So it was so impressed. The last week of the factory before the shutdown, they even helped clean up. Everyone come together, um, clean up the factories, a big cleaning. And they... Um, kind of uh, have a very good memory. They, we, we 
gave them the farewell party. Mm. So the farewell party become became like a um, high school student uh, farewell mm. uh, party with a good memory. Mm. And I I think after that every year I think they still meet up. With each other, <laughs> that's a great story because it starts uh-huh. with uh, an outreach and and or rather mm-hmm. opening the lines of communication from from HR yes. and making sure yeah. that you are giving a, a personal attention to uh, any of the fears and anxieties that they have, mm-hmm. and then on top of that, reinforcing that message through mm-hmm. a very unique perspective from mm-hmm. their managers. So and that led to uh, a smooth transition and even uh-huh. a very high ownership right till the end. So. <laughs> That's that's a great story, and and to have people um, recruited or to have people hired into such strong cultures requires also the role of a recruiter. Yes, and, and uh-huh. therefore the role of the recruiter, of course, extends beyond just interviewing and and hiring. Mm. Right? What role, in addition to this, might a recruiter play to ensure that whoever is just hired is becomes a successful hire? Uh, we have to make sure that not just the uh, finish uh, success in hiring is the end. Of the jobs of the recruiters, uh, recruiter may, must make sure that uh, new hire are uh, on board, at least on the first week at the company smoothly. So along the way, after uh, new hires get confirmed, so we will set um, timing to uh, talk with the new hire uh-huh. um, from time to time to make mm-hmm. sure that they are ready. Uh, to be on board, tell them about our locations, about how what to prepare, keep them in touch. At least they uh, become friends with our recruiters. On the first day, the recruiters work with the HR business partners to make sure that all necessary tools, equipment, computers, whatever uh, it is required for the new hires to be able to start that job since the first day must be available on that day. So this is the uh, goal that we set that uh, those who onboard the first day, they must have everything uh, ready for them to be able to connect with other people in the organizations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we connect them with the managers as well. So then the recruiter makes a person's experience memorable and, and it's a positive uh-huh. personal first impression. And, and then it leads to the new hire settling in and and getting used to their their work environment and also performing. Now, that leads us to the question of development for employees. Mm -hmm. At what stage do you think a a company, especially a startup maybe, begin to incorporate learning and development into their people's strategies? For startup, I see that our startup is a very challenging uh, business. Um, And it's another way, it's good for their employees to take learning and development as part of uh, the uh, work uh-huh, at job as well, because learning development for startup is a part of the startup life. This is how I see uh, startup does, uh, for example, sorry, for learning development doesn't mean you learn in the course or training, but with startup, your peoples or employees would have the real life experiences that many um, co- company, big company may not be able to offer to that people because people will have a real uh, life experiences of the growth of the companies, change of the business, and the peoples have to uh, be able to adjust to uh, change. I would say learning development uh, is part of the startup for mm-hmm. sure, but um, the, for the personalities of those who qualify to work with a startup, probably that is more challenging uh, to have someone who are more agile. <laughs> I understand what you mean here because the learning is it's constant, especially in a startup, and then it may be formal or informal. And, mm-hmm. and very often it can be very practical and informal ways of learning, but mm-hmm. that doesn't necessarily set uh, start up to a specific phase where they need to include learning and development. For many startups today, they are in the tech space and uh, some of them are in HR technology. And many companies as well, even large ones, uh, are starting to use HR technology and it's a must. So what kind of impact do you think these technologies and tools have on recruitment? It's impacts on recruitment uh, a lot. Mm. Um, I see that it gives opportunities for our HR to 
have more profile, expand the profile, expand the search of the people who may fit with the role uh, of that job. Uh-huh. Expand the talent want, pool, right? Yeah, expand okay. the talent pool. Uh huh. Beyond um, the scope that HR probably may may have. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. To to further because we know that technologies could bring in uh, so many uh, peoples uh, and also varieties of peoples. Mm-hmm. Also, I see the benefits of technologies in the futures with uh, AI technologies would also help to HR to search for the right people's bias or personal bias because uh, recruiters may have a different perspective. But with uh, technologies, I think that kind of bias will be uh, reduced and it helps people to be able to uh, see and meet the job that uh, probably uh, interest them. So you today have vast experience in the HR and recruitment space. What advice would you give to someone starting out in recruitment today? For someone start uh, out as a recruitment today, I would say that first you must be interested Mm -hmm. in getting to know people. People. (laughs) Because recruiters have to talk with people, meet with people, see lots of profiles of the people. So first thing you must be interested in uh, people. Uh-huh. Uh love to understand um, their needs, uh, match, be able to match the right people uh, with the uh, right job. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So I would say it's unavoidable. Um, interested in working with, with people, love talking with people is the first thing that I see. Second, you, uh, for recruiters have to have a very good listening. Listen well with the managers. If you are a recruiter uh, companies, listen to your customers on their need. This is uh, very important. So lots of times when I work with recruiters, mm-hmm. uh, I work with recruiters who listen well. So they know the need of the customer. So this is a very important thing. Despite um, experiences, um, I see recruiters who success is mm-hmm. someone who listen well and know the needs and be able to uh, match the right people to to the profile listening is very important even at the recruitment stage and even you know as you have mentioned earlier within the hr and and change mm-hmm. communication space as well mm-hmm. thank you very much mavitri for your time today it's such a pleasure to have you on the show i'm sure the audience wants to know okay. more about you and and your company so where can they uh-huh. find you i have my profiles on linkedin um names are mavitri nantana and uh, yeah, so basically uh, it's uh, there. Uh-huh. So if you're interested to learn more about uh, experiences in HR or have some things that you would like to discuss about kind of any kind of uh, issues relating to um, people developments or um, your careers, if you are uh, looking forward to change your careers in the futures and reluctance, uh, I'm very happy to also share my experiences. Yes, because you have changed, you have switched quite seamlessly from one, one side yes. to the other, but they are quite related, as you have just mentioned. And we have been speaking with Mavitri Nantana, who is the country HR head at Jakobs Do Egberts in Bangkok, Thailand. Do look out for future podcasts from All in Recruitment and stay tuned for our next videos. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.